Hi, and welcome to our channel. My name is Andrea with Foodimentary Adventures in Food. It is officially the end of the first week of the pantry, fridge, and freezer challenge. And if you are doing the challenge, I would love to know how your first week went. For me, it went pretty good. Um, Harrison did run out of milk. I didn't trust myself to go to the grocery store and just get milk, so Howard did go for us. I do miss going to the grocery store. I used to go once a week. Um, but I did come up with some fun, creative um, meals, I think. So you'll see those in just a second. And if you want to know the details of the pantry challenge want to know specifically what I am doing I will leave a link to that video in the description box below good morning today is Monday January 3rd today is the first day of the pantry freezer and fridge challenge and I made some Bisquick waffles um, I've had this mix for a while and I have another box that I need to get through too. So I went out and bought a waffle iron this past weekend so that I can make up some waffles and other breakfast items. So this is what we are having breakfast today and I'll see you later on. So for lunch, we're having leftovers. Howard is finishing up this creamy spinach tortellini. I'll link the recipe in the description box. And I am having some um, rice and pinto beans with smoked ham hocks. And I will leave the recipe for that in the description box as well. Okay, so for tonight's dinner, I'm just kind of making it up as I go along. So in my pantry, I have this hamburger helper and it's actually a rice mix. So here's a rice mixture right here. Got some ground beef from my freezer. I had an eight ounce block of pepper jack cheese that I'm using. And then I have these two humongous bell peppers. So I am going to make a stuffed bell pepper dish. So I'm just gonna cut these bell peppers in half. I'm gonna prepare the um, hamburger helper according to package directions. I'm gonna put half of this cheese in the mixture, and then I'm gonna put the other half on top of the peppers. If it seems a little dry, I may add some taco seasoning to it, but I don't know what I'm gonna to make to go with it just yet, but I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so here are the stuffed peppers. It took about an hour to bake, and then I am serving it with some, just some regular old corn that I added salt and butter to. And then here is what's left over. I'm sure that we're gonna have this for lunch one day. And then I also decided to make some chocolate chip cookies, had these in the pantry. And here is what they look like. If you've never had Krusty's, this is a really good brand. Um, I like all of their baking mixes. They taste really close to homemade. So anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we'll see y'all next time. So we are having waffles again this morning for breakfast. This time I decided to use a packet a package of this sweet cream waffle and pancake mix and I am serving it alongside some pre-cooked Costco bacon. So this is what we are having for breakfast today and we'll see you later on. So for lunch today, we are having this frozen pizza from Midtown Pizza Company. Um, it came from a grocery store in Texas called HEB. A couple of months ago, we tried their brisket pizza and it was really good. So we are trying out this margarita pizza for the first time. And here it is. It came with a separate package of a, um, like a basil pesto sauce. So once it comes out of the oven, you're supposed to put that on there. And so that's what that is. And it has um, Roma tomatoes. And of course it has the sauce and lots of gooey cheese. So this is what we are having for lunch today and I will see y'all at dinner. Okay, so for dinner tonight, I am making hot ham and cheese sandwiches using crescent rolls. And I'm using these from Trader Joe's. Eight little rolls uh, come in the package and I just separated them into four squares. So I pressed them together to make them four little equal squares. For the ham, I am using this uh, ham, mesquite smoked ham from HEB, which is a grocery store in Texas. And then for the cheese, I am using this Kerrygold cheese. Love this stuff. Up. It is so good. So you could put mustard down, whatever other condiments you prefer. I'm keeping ours plain. Howard isn't big into mustard. So I'm just laying a couple of slices of folded cheese um, in the middle and then just taking a piece of the Kerrygold 
and putting it in here as well. I just broke it in half. And then I am going to try to fold it over the best that I can. Stuff it in there. And then you're just gonna use your fork to press the seal together. And I am gonna do this to the rest of these. So the hot ham and cheese pockets are hot out of the oven. As you can see, I didn't seal them well enough and the cheese started to come out a little bit. That's okay, I'm gonna let these cool and hopefully that cheese will harden up a little bit. And then I threw some fries in the air fryer. I had about half a bag of these fries left in my freezer and these are actually pretty good. Um, they taste really good right out of the air fryer. I know for me, it's hard to find a good frozen fry that fries up well in the air fryer and these are it. So anyway, quick and easy dinner tonight and we'll see y'all tomorrow morning. So for breakfast today, we are finishing up these breakfast flautas that I had in my freezer from HEB. They are a flour tortilla stuffed with brisket, egg, and cheese. You can make them in the microwave, um, but I threw mine in the air fryer, um, and Whoa. here they are. They are really good. Howard and I both like them. You can serve them with salsa, but I, I don't feel like doing that today. So anyway, this is what we are having for breakfast, and we'll see you later on. So for lunch today, I am eating from our freezer and I am having these steamed chicken soup dumplings from Trader Joe's. Howard actually got me into these and I really like them a lot. They're a really quick lunch just to throw in the microwave and have. And I am also having one of these Klondike shakes that I bought, I guess it was probably over the summer or late fall, I can't remember, but I'm having one of these Klondike shakes too. Howard is still working. He hasn't stopped for a lunch break yet. Um, so I'll have to let you guys know what he had for lunch at dinner. So see ya next meal. Okay, so before I tell you what we're having for dinner, I wanted to mention to you that Howard had beans and rice for um, lunch today. So he had leftover pinto beans and rice. We probably have about two servings left that we need to finish up. But for dinner, we are having this chicken chow mein. Of course, it was in my freezer. It's from Trader Joe's. I love having this on hand for a quick weeknight meal. Um, so it comes with all the vegetables and noodles. To it, I added two heads of fresh broccoli that I chopped up really well, sauteed it in, or the broccoli in oil, and or olive oil, excuse me, in this Korean barbecue um, rub. So I have a lot of seasonings in my um, pantry that I need to use too. So I added this and it's really tasty. And even though I added the two extra heads of broccoli, I did not need any additional sauce. There was plenty of sauce to cover the broccoli. And then I am serving it with egg rolls from HEB, which is a grocery store here in Texas. I don't have the box anymore. I threw the box away, but these are pork egg rolls and I just threw them in my air fryer and cooked them up. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we'll see y'all next time. So this morning I'm making breakfast quesadillas. I have three eggs in here and I have some um, cooked bacon. I cooked four slices of bacon. I've got my pan that I'm getting ready to heat up for the quesadillas. I am using some flour tortillas. I'm using a low carb one from um, um, Aldi and then Howard is using just a regular one. So here's a calorie difference in case you were wondering. This is a regular one, 140 calories, 24 carbs. This is the low carb one, 80 calories and 11 carbs. So I'm trying these out. And then I have some leftover pepper jack cheese from the um, stuffed bell peppers that I made. Okay, so here are our quesadillas. This is Howard's and I've got his cut up. Mine, I just took off the fire and it needs to cool a little bit before I can cut it up. But um, one difference I did see between the regular tortilla and low carb is that the low carb tortilla cooked really, really quickly. But anyway, this is a quick and easy breakfast. You could definitely make a bunch of these up on the weekend and then just reheat them for the weekday. So we will see you all at lunch. So for lunch today, we are finishing off the pinto beans and rice, and I will see you at dinner time. 
So I am trying out a new recipe that I found in an old cookbook for oven fried chicken. So in my bowl, I have eight pieces of chicken. I have four drums and two thighs. And the recipe calls for you to season them with salt and pepper and paprika. I am using this um, mixed up salt. I really like it a lot um, by I think Jane's, oh, I'm sorry, Jane's Crazy Mixed Up Salt. So I'm using this. And then I'm also just using some paprika as well. So um, I've got a pan here that I've already poured some oil into. And then I've got a bag of flour in a Ziploc bag. And all I'm going to do is dip the, flour, dip the chicken into the bag, um, toss it around, and then put it in the pan. Okay, so I've got my chicken all coated and ready to go. I've got my oven preheated to 400 degrees. And so you're supposed to cook this for 30 minutes on one side and then flip it over and cook it for another 30 minutes. Um, one thing I did forget to mention is that when I put my seasoning on my chicken, I did do it this morning and I put it in the fridge. So it's been marinating for about half an hour. So I hope that makes it even more delicious. Okay, so here is the oven fried chicken. I did have to bake this about 20 minutes more total than what the recipe called for. Um, and I am serving it with some mashed potatoes. I made some homemade mashed potatoes. Instead of regular butter, like the unsalted butter, I had this in my fridge. I wanted to use it up, get rid of it, so I added it to my mashed potatoes. And then also made some green beans. I just stir fried some green beans. That is Harrison. He is playing underneath my feet pretty much. Um, but these are the green beans that I use from Trader Joe's. They're French green beans. And I just sauteed them in um, 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 olive oil. And then I used this trying to use up my spices. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight. And we'll see y'all next time. So for breakfast today, I am working on my granola bar stash. I am having this sweet and salty shaved coconut and almond bar from HEB, a grocery store here in Texas with a small Granny Smith apple. And Howard is working on his cereal and he is having a bowl of Frosted Flakes. Okay, so it's lunchtime and Howard and I are both having leftovers. I am finishing up the chicken chow mein um, from the other night and I just threw an egg roll in the air fryer. Howard has not taken his lunch yet, but he is going to have the stuffed bell pepper from the other night. So that's what we're having for lunch and I'll see y'all at dinner. So for dinner tonight, we are having Zupa Toscana. This is something that I've made several times on our channel. We really like it a lot. Um, I did not have Italian sausage, which is what this recipe calls for. So I just used regular pork breakfast sausage. And then I looked online and it said the difference between the Italian sausage and the breakfast sausage is fennel and garlic powder. So I did add some garlic powder to this, but I didn't have any fennel. But anyway, just using what I've got for the pantry challenge. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we'll see y'all next time.